it up if you want. Yeah. Get it Don't all be afraid. Get up in it. It's get up in it. <laughs> microphone loves it. It seriously. That's it good. tells me. That's, that's because good. Because <laughs> I'm to the point in my mom life where inanimate objects are talking to me at night. Always. And it tells me that it loves you. I love you. <laughs> sometimes, you know, sometimes those are the only things that love you some days. And As an object <laughs> with lots of batteries, yes, some days. <laughs> okay, so I am doing this podcast immediately after Eva's podcast. So you already know that we have switched from wine. I know the title is deceiving, but we are now drinking the Outlaw Distillery. It's a local distillery here in Utah, located in Sandy. But we are drinking their spiced rum with apple cider and salted caramel vodka, which I'm not even afraid or ashamed to admit this, but I totally stole this recipe from you. I know. I and love that. You can find <laughs> the recipe on Amazon.com. Awesome. <laughs> and it is one of my favorite fall boozy drinks. Dude, it is fall and cup. It is, it is fantastic. I love it cold. I love it hot. Kind of like my sex life. You know, married, being married, it's like sometimes it's a frigid winter. (laughs) Oh, no. Well, actually, I was reading this article the other day, and it said that the majority of people's birthdays are between September and... No. I read an article, and then I was talking to this woman who is also a uh, railroad wife. Okay. And I called her because she was an insurance lead. Her and her husband refinanced their home. And she is, like, all into astrology and all into, like, the stars and horoscopes. She was asking me about my horoscope and my boyfriend Mike's horoscope and all of this stuff. And she said that the most people out of, uh, I guess, all of the people are born within, like, September to the 1st of November. That's crazy. Two months out of the year is the The jam-packed of birthdays. Well, that's, like... That means New a Year's lot of people Eve, right? were having... That's like busy New Year's Eve yes. time. Yeah. Doing it on Christmas, yeah. doing it on New Year's. Yeah. I've definitely fallen to that that uh, that time frame. I'm the end of September, so... There you go. Thanks, Your Mom and Dad. had a jolly old yeah, they Christmas. Did. <laughs> why, why is that always gross? I don't right? know. Why is that gross? Because, like... I remember as like a teenager, like the thought of your parents having sex, you're just like, oh my God, I'm going to be scarred for life. Like even just the thought of it, right? And now as a parent, as a mom, I'm like, what's so bad? Like, I mean, A, I need more. (laughs) Play dates. Right. (laughs) Snacks. Early morning. They're not up yet. You know, like you Imagine our parents were doing that. Right. How weird. Right. So it's like. Kind of gross. Right. So as a high schooler, I remember thinking like that is just disgusting. (laughs) Look at Eva's face right now. Thank God she has headphones. They're clearly not enough. (laughs) But as now as a mom myself, I'm like, well, it's not that gross, but I'm sure my older son, so I have a 12-year-old and a four-and-a-half-year-old, and and I'm sure he would just be mortified, like, if he knew, right? Absolutely. But it's like, just give it, give it a good 20 years, bro, you'll be, (laughs) it's all good. Now, I recently also just had a birthday. I'm October 6th, and I turned 29, and I think I am now probably the horniest I've ever been in my oh, life. Oh, yeah. Just wait, girl. I've had a kid. Oh, I'm, yeah. like, past the age of 28. Because they say 28 to 32 is, like, go get it time. I, like I, would, I would agree but slightly um, disagree because I um, – my whole 30s. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, they don't call it dirty 30 for nothing. And it's like, it's, like, all of it. Because I was almost disappointed all that I it. would be having – just a couple of years. Just a couple years of great <laughs> sex. No, I feel like they say like, oh, your hormones are running wild, like your right. first year of college, like all that stuff, like early sure. 20s, late teens. But like that was literally for me filled with the worst sex of my life. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> because you're like, you don't know what you're doing. 
you're like, is this how it's supposed to work? Is this how it's right? right? You're so, I mean, you're young, you're inexperienced. You don't know what you're doing. You're doing it just because A, it feels good. But B, because like, it's like expected. We I know, think, we know right? now. And so like in my thirties, I was like, like I had more like empowerment over my sex life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm like, this is what I like. This is what you have yes. to do. Do it yes. or there's the door. Yes. And <laughs> this feels good. And this doesn't. And and having the confidence to say that and yeah. to voice that opinion and not be like ashamed or embarrassed about it. Like, oh, yeah. Sex in my 30s, girl. Those were some of the best. Those I'm only 29. Yeah. I still got yeah. a year. Woo! Girl, a whole year plus some, <laughs> a whole ten years of amazing sex. I'm, I'm telling you, some of the yeah. best. It's awesome. That could be enough for the rest of my life. It could be, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Just to let you know. <laughs> so, a lot of you know, I am the cliche single mom blogger online. It's actually I've written a couple blog posts recently that have been my boyfriend inspired. Um, He's a huge hockey Bruins fan. And I've been creating and I've actually been having a ton of fun. I've been creating all of these like little sport lookbooks with my Zaya activewear plus awesome things that I've found on Target or Amazon. Um, It's been freaking super fun. They're really fun fun for me to create people have been loving them. Um, And then I also what else did I do? I think I did like a birthday haul. But, like, I've mentioned him a few times on my blog, and I've gotten some emails. I've gotten some comments on social media, DMs on Instagram, of people being like, you're no longer that single mom blogger. And I'm like, no, girl, no. Oh. Until, like, I think I'm always going to be this single mom. Like, I'm sure. always going to be myself. But sure. until I file married on my tax return, I am single <laughs> AF. <laughs> like, uh I am married and actually filed single on my my taxes. So probably better you for you. A chunk of change. Yeah. However, <laughs> um, I feel you on that because I did. I you know I've been the single mom. Yeah. And even before my divorce, I felt like a single mom just because he wasn't around a whole lot. So I actually even joked that I was like a married single mom. There you go. You it know. Happens. And so I had a, a you know a long stretch of time where I was single and it was just me and my older son and um. There are times that I'm not going to lie. There are times now being remarried. I miss the crap out of being single. Really? Yeah. I am. I've always <laughs> been so obsessed. Like, I don't want to have like a big giant wedding. Right. Mostly because a lot of the people that I would want there aren't going to be there. But like, I have always been obsessed with like being a wife. Not like a stay at home kept woman wife. Right. Right. Just like I'm one of those people who just loves the idea of being married. Right. I want to have like a 1940s life in a right. modern world. Right. And I think that's great. I think that's great. And I think that there is some beautiful so parts of that. That you felt? Well, and I think it's just because I really miss, I miss my alone time. Yeah. Right. So when I was single, raising a kiddo you know, we shared time, right? So I would have, you know, three, four, five days often in a row all to myself. So I could read whatever I wanted. I could go wherever I wanted. I could sleep in. I could stay up late. I could do that kind of stuff. And so now being remarried and having another kiddo, like that time is not mine anymore, right? right? So, I mean, I have to find it. I have to make it, but I don't get like three or five days in a row. I get like, (laughs) three to five hours. So how was sharing time originally for you? Because Milo is going, he's over two. He just had a birthday on the 19th. Okay. And we've never shared time. Okay. So Milo's never gone to his dad's for the weekend. His dad has always come to our house. He's always visited for a few hours and then kind of left. Right. So now that we're getting to the point in our co-parenting lives, we're heading down the aisle to court. Right. And I feel like that time is coming to where I'm going to have to, like, watch him walk out the door for the first time to, right. like, spend some time alone with his dad. Right. And that is literally, like, killing my soul. Right. 
and it's like just breaking my heart. Right. I'm gonna die. You you won't die. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna get. Maybe you guys should come over. I was because just gonna tell you the story. I feel like I would even be more pathetic getting white girl wasted by myself. <laughs> Like, just crying myself to sleep. Like, there's, there's a time and place for that I'm in single die. mom life. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so the very first weekend that my son went with his dad. So, um, even though we were married, like I said, he just wasn't around a whole lot. He worked nights, and he just kind of lived a very separate life from us. So, we spent every day together. And so, that first weekend... That he went to his dad's. I think it was like a Friday to a Sunday. So it was just a couple nights, right? It wasn't like it was a week. My or eyes like right that. now are huge. <laughs> That's like the longest period right. of time ever. Right. And it, it <laughs> felt like it. It did. Um, but we did just that. Like my best friend came over. She brought Thai food and like three bottles of wine. And mm. like we had this like Stay up, watch stupid movies, drink wine, cry in our Thai food, sleepover. And it yes. was fantastic because it, so it was great because it was this really beautiful distraction um, from my, my misery. Yes. Right? Um, and then the next day we got up and we had breakfast and mimosas. And then, and then I got to have a night alone, right? And just kind of be in my own like sorrow and and to kind of experience that, I think there's something really important about being in that space and just kind of experiencing that and letting the feelings come and go and being okay with that. Because if that's the case and yeah. more days and more weekends like that come, you're going to be in that space again, right? So to spend some alone time in that space and to kind of have that time with yourself, I think is really important. Right. But hell yes, have like a girls <laughs> night, we'll come over, I'll bring some wine, we'll make moonshine cocktails. Yes. Watch crappy movies. With Outlaw Distillery yes. Moonshine. Yes. It's I'm just right over at Sandy, we can my, go pick it up. <laughs> so I was telling my husband that I was coming over to do this blog, blog uh, no, um, we're doing a podcast. Yes. Yes. I'm um, doing this podcast and then staying after and doing the mixer with the cocktails. And he was like, well, hey, if they have whiskey, will you bring? I'm like, honey, it's not, I'm not shopping. Like, this is like a girl's night cocktail thing. And he was like, oh. I'll put some in the Tupperware for you. Don't you worry. So he was, he was feeling a little left out of I the have, girl's night. So Outlaw Distillery actually gave me three. And um, all of the blog posts that I'm going to be creating – the cocktail recipes are all going to be online. You can find them at Amazon.com. But they are going, there's coffee rum, which I literally, like he says that he drinks it straight with creamer and like a dollop of whipped cream on top. Like a white Russian yes, sort of like style. like a dirty Russian. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, let's get some of those. That sounds hot. Yeah. <laughs> I, anybody who knows me knows that I have a thing for like Eastern European men and Russians. I think any 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 man with an accent that's not southern. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Because I don't want to offend offend anybody <laughs> in your audience, so I'm just going to keep that opinion to myself. <laughs> not that, that there's any. I think it's a great. It's you know it's adorable. what it's not that, I love. It's not that sexy like. Yeah, but you know what Tom I love Hardy. though is um, what is his name? Matthew McConaughey. Okay, well. He is the okay, exception now, to all of the rules. If they all looked <laughs> and sounded like that, I would allow Southern accents into my fantasies. Yes. However, but Tom don't. Hardy rules. <laughs> rules them all. They also gave me a spiced rum, which mm, is what we're drinking that's now. That's what we're drinking. It's so good. It's smooth, right? Oh, my it's gosh. It's not like no. a... What is that? Sailor Jerry or like even a Captain Morgan. No, it's very smooth no. and mild and yes. the spices. Like he we did a tour. Oh fun. So I got on Groupon and I got me and my boyfriend Mike um two tickets. It was like twenty four dollars right. to do a tour. And he showed us how he does everything, how the whole process works, awesome. how he bottles everything, labels everything, where he gets his ingredients from. All of this stuff. It was super cool. Yeah. And my boyfriend, Mike, is really into um, Peddleton, I think is what it's oh, called. Yeah. That's like his drink of choice. Oh, yeah. Um, so I thought this would be like a fun, unique kind of date night for us to yeah. do. Yeah. And uh, 
So yeah, we went there, did the tour. I got a t-shirt and a shot glass. Gotta love the swag. Um, he also got a t-shirt and a shot glass. And then now I've partnered up with them to do a few recipes on my blog for um, fall and the holidays. Yes. So they also gave us a moonshine, which I think is what we should taste next. I think so. Because I'm, I'm going to partner that with a, and he says his wife puts it in everything. Okay. Which I'm not sure how I'm supposed to take that information. <laughs> um, his wife must be a far more hardcore lady than me. But right. she puts so, the moonshine yeah. in everything. Mojitos, margaritas. She just, like, adds it to everything. She's like, so she doesn't do anything. it's kind of, like... Very universal. Yeah. It's like a Swiss Army knife of, of yes. liquors. And okay. a lot of people... He, when we were doing the tour, he was telling us that a lot of people were very discouraged about the moonshine because people who, like, did it in, like, the Prohibition and whatever were, like, making it with, like, gasoline and, like, battery acid. Okay. And I'm, like, he was, like, telling me all these historical stories. It's a really cool tour. If you and That's your husband really want to cool. do it, it's, yeah. like, super cheap on Groupon. That, yeah, um, we'll check that out for sure. Yes, it yeah. was super fun. And, but it's very mild. It's, like, almost like a neutral. Okay. So, like, you so can like add So, like, a vodka it. almost. Yeah, okay. but it doesn't have that, like, vodka. Yep alcohol thing yep. so we're gonna cool. partner that with um the smirnoff light sorbet okay with sprite okay very refreshing yes mild in calories so i'm curious so for those bitches on a diet <laughs> those not us not us <laughs> as we drink our very sugary <laughs> i don't care i'll take it nope sure don't be okay so cares. good um, I'm so glad I stole this recipe. You know? <laughs> You're welcome. <anyway. laughs> You're, thank um, you. <laughs> so I'm really curious to taste this moonshine because one of my other favorite cocktails, and you're more than welcome to steal this one as well. Oh, I'll is, do it. I'm um, a cocktail thief. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good hashtag right there. <laughs> hashtag cocktail, cocktail thief. thief. Um, I love it. So one of my favorites is uh, lavender lemonade. So I usually do it with vodka. But then I get the, um, I think it's called like Simply Lemonade. So it's supposed to be like the more natural. Like the crystal light stuff? No, not that crap. Like the... <laughs> I love crystal light. <laughs> I think Eva knows this. Anybody from Ohio is down with crystal light. Is that like an Ohio thing? It's a freaking Ohio oh, okay. thing. okay. I didn't know that. Light and Country okay. Time. Yes, oh, Country Time. Is even. like okay. our jam. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why. All but right. Like, that is... Those are two things you can find in every Ohioan's household at all times. That's it's like hilarious. ketchup and barbecue sauce. Right. Okay. <laughs> That's hilarious because I love how like little cultures have like their things. Like the thing here in Utah, as I'm learning, like well, one of Dr. The Pepper. Dr. Pepper and fry <laughs> sauce. Fry sauce is fry sauce disgusting. Is um it's a it's something. It's the sludge <laughs> of the <laughs> Dirty, filthy underground of Utah. Um, I, my I husband it. loves it. I hate he started it. started making it homemade. Stop. <laughs> Stop <laughs> it right home. now. That is, oh. He, so, is, he is becoming a Utahian. A, a Utahian? A Utah? Utah? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so where are you originally from? I have to hear this story of your transplantation. Okay, yeah, it's it's a crazy story. So I actually originally, originally am from Colorado. Awesome. Love Grew it. up in Colorado, way up high in the mountains. What else, Frazier? <laughs> so um, nobody knows what that is. Nobody knows where that is. Um, so grew up skiing, doing that whole thing, and then went to college, fell in love with a guy, you know, no. something was terrible. He... Um, <laughs> And some of the other guys that we went to college with lived in Portland. So I came out to Portland, Oregon, and fell in love with it and lived there for 18 years. So lived there for another chunk of my life. Dude, I think I could dig Portland. It's pretty rad. So I'm not going to lie. I was a travel yeah. writer for a little while, and I did quite a bit of traveling for about two years in my life. And that is one of the only places I have not gone, except for like Hawaii and Alaska. Right. Portland and Washington, 
are literally the only states I have not visited. They are beautiful. And those are the two I've always wanted to go. Yeah, they're absolutely beautiful. Um, so I moved there in 2000 and just fell in love with it. Like the city was young and clean and safe and it was cool and kind of edgy and weird and all of the things <laughs> that are me. just saying that <laughs> Portland's slogan is keep Portland weird. It is. Yeah. I'm down with Did weird. you tell them about the Darth Vader on the unicycle with the flaming <gasps> bagpipe? She did it. Yeah. She so that's like back. a thing. That's like a thing. He's cool. He's he plays yeah, bagpipes that shoot flames and Wow, well, I'm like, down with weird. Yeah. I the think Unipaper. all three of us. Yes. So I get super cheap tickets and oftentimes Sky Scanner, shout out to them. Okay. Um will send me discount codes for free tickets throughout oh, the year. Yeah. I'm an affiliate for Sky Scanner. This is not an ad, but if you wanna go somewhere fucking use them but um yeah so they will give me all kinds of like super good travel deals and i think the three of us should do like a girls portland trip oh my god that would be amazing. that would be hella fun because i've never been there and i've been dying and you guys have both lived there it's so right no like oh yeah the down we'll and out places the, to go we'll have the bar restaurant like we'll have like a whole itinerary of like and then also Ooh, one of my best friends owns a vineyard out there, uh, Kings Raven Winery. Shout Check out. It. Check it out. It's amazing. So we are can they do at, a like whole... Instagram or something? Oh yeah, they are at Kings Raven Winery. Do it. Yeah. They're Look amazing. They're amazing. I would like elope on a like a vineyard. Oh my god, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely beautiful. Stop. It's or- beautiful. Oregon and wine. Evan. We're doing it. Well man, have it. I'm going. I know a few people. This way. <laughs> This way, you keep, nobody can see me pointing right no. now. I keep forgetting that this is not video recorded, but I am pointing in a direction that I would hope would be Generally Portland. in the northern area. <laughs> oh my yes. gosh. And so we lived there until January of last year um, when my family and I decided to like throw caution to the wind. We literally sold our house, 90% of what we own all of our cars and we bought a truck and a fifth wheel and we headed south into Southern California and we snowboarded down in Southern California for like four months. It was amazing. I love that. It was amazing and terrible all at the same time. It's great. It was fantastic. It's like the best marriage therapy you could ever have. I have been dying for years to buy a school bus and to like rehab the whole thing. Yep. And like make it to where it fits me. Yep. And, like, maybe my son, because yep. I really just, like, I don't like anybody else. Right. <laughs> like, enough room that if people wanted to, like, pop by and, like, visit. Yeah, or, like, like join crash you for, like, on my little futon tr- yeah, that like, is a little nailed trip. down to the floor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, yes. crash Everything, on Everything, that's the other thing that you learn when you, like, are mobile living like that, like, the RV life, <laughs> is things that you're, like, oh, well, I'll just put this thing here. And then... Or, like, just throw these things in the cabinet, and then you get where you're going, and you literally open up a cabinet, and all of the shit just, like, falls out on top of you, and you're like, oh, that didn't work. <laughs> That's not, in a in a stationary home, that would See, legit work. See, I was work. so into it <laughs> that I watched this girl fully build her schoolie, is what they're called. Yep. yep. Um, fully build it. She did, like, a home tour. I'm doing air quotes right now. Um, whole thing, and then she did a video. So after all of this, after I've been like so invested, I was looking at school buses to buy. Yeah. I was looking on Home Depot to see how much materials would cost to see if I needed to like open up a credit card or like if I could just do it in installments or like how I was gonna do this. And then she posted a video of what happens to my stuff when I drive. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's everywhere. And she didn't realize that after all of this time building and all of this time doing everything, she took her first drive and like she posted this video of like noodles from an open box just like everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> like it was nuts. Yeah. And then the very next video after that that she posted on her YouTube channel yeah. was how I store everything. When I drive, <laughs> and it was yes. like plastic bin, yes. um, and just kind of like sitting on the floor. Yes, yeah, <laughs> bungee cords yeah. for our best friends. Like everything got bungeed. Um, we got like the um, 
Ikea tempered glass, glassware and plates and bowls. Oh, and like the like unbreakable. That. Right, right. Which, by the way, if you do drop them directly onto the ground, <laughs> they will break. <laughs> but then they're not well, ESA. Enough. Right. So, but like just kind of being bumped around. Right. When we bought the trailer, when we bought the fifth wheel, the guy who we bought it from told us that it's essentially like a 4.5 earthquake or something like that. In in the trailer while you're driving, so oh, it's like essentially okay. like being in a 4.5 right. earthquake. So if you're wondering how to store people in California all are like terrified of that, yeah, just just Google it. Just Google like how <laughs> to like not have all my shit break during an earthquake. Google your life. That's what <laughs> I mean. That's how you pack for living in an RV. There you go. It's just assume that it's going to break. Also, what feet. will break? What can break will break. In an RV. Oh, I'm so sure. So if it's a moving part, or it has a knob, or something that is, should be functional, <laughs> it's going to break. <laughs> so basically, you just like stocked up on like childproofing material. Basically, <laughs> basically childproofing and like plumbing. <laughs> so you plumbing took an RV terrible. and a pickup truck. Yeah. To Southern California, you said. Yeah. And then how did you end up here in Utah? Because Utah is the strangest place I, I feel like I've ever lived in my life. It is. It's. Um, and I've been to Dothan, Alabama. You never didn't? Uh, That's okay. Of course you haven't because it's Dothan, Alabama. You would think that would right. be the weirdest place I've right. ever lived or been. Right. And it's not. Yeah. You know, I, um, yeah. Utah is it's it's legit an alternate universe. I feel like I'm in a twilight zone. Yeah, it's I mean there's moments of of like normalcy where you're like this brief short teeny short little glimpses, moments. teeny little <laughs> glimpses, and then like something will happen. You're like, what the? Fuck? <laughs> oh, that's right. I live in Utah, <laughs> right? You're yes. like, oh, that's okay, right? To be expected. Yeah. Um. So we were in. Um, Menifee, California, which is just right outside of like the Temecula area. Okay, like down um, by San Diego. Kind of. Yep, okay. exactly. So we were there. And also, by the way, if you plan to do any RVing with children, um, don't necessarily go southern in the winter because that's where all of the oh, old people sure. go. So we were legit the youngest people in all, <laughs> all of these RV parks. And at first, I was a little ticked because I was like, now I still have to entertain my children, right? See, Which, Milo, hmm. luckily, loves the cold. He hates to be hot. Okay. He hates to be sweaty. Okay. He loves snow. Right. He's down. Yeah. He's down for some winter. Okay. So both of my kids love sunshine and warm and oh, swimming. He hates the sun. Yeah. He was screaming like someone was literally <laughs> stabbing him repetitively. Right. In the back seat of my car, because the sun was in one of his eyes. Right, and you're the asshole because you allowed it to be. There. I'm the terrible mother yes. who's driving inward to the sun. Yes, you're the worst. I'm, I'm yeah. the worst. And have you seen that show? It's on Hulu. You should watch it. You're Which the show? worst. Oh no! It's fucking funny. Okay. Oh my god! It is seriously so funny. Okay. You're the worst. Is about like literally probably the two worst people on the planet. Like these people are like puppy kicking. Like <laughs> I can get down with the show. I think it's it's grungy. Yeah. It's alternative. Yeah. It's trashy and it's good. Great. Right up my alley. Amazing. I like it. Okay. It's good. on Hulu. You should watch it. Um. <laughs> so, but the upside of that though was like both of my children then instantly had like seventy five grandparents. You know what I mean? So I love like old people when they it were comes the to best, babies, right? Because like you know, Corbin, my youngest, my kiddo, he would be throwing a fit, and they're like, "Oh, come with us! There's cookies in the clubhouse." So they would like yes. take them off to the clubhouse and like sugar them all up with cookies, and then bring them back, and then it would be like ice cream social hour. Like the witch who lived in the gingerbread house. It was house. amazing. I would like have them. <laughs> she just didn't boil just, them at the end of the show. I know, but and they gave them back, <laughs> which I was a little disappointed about. <laughs> Really? Okay, hold on a second. Do you have to give them back? <laughs> After you've sugared them up. Thank you so much. You're so kind. Thank you. Um, but it was so fun. Like, we we really, we didn't run into a lot of kids during our time. So that was a little bit challenging. We were kind of hoping that we could, like, let them 
spread their wings a little bit in the RV parks and go ride their bikes and find some kids and play. And that necessarily wasn't the case, but regardless, it was really fantastic. But we were there and, um, my, my husband, bless his heart. So I am like the gypsy soul. I'm like the, the voodoo hippie witch of the family. Um, and he is like the structure corporate schedule (laughs) routine dude. Right. So he looked at How me one funny day. Is it the opposites attract sometimes? We're complete, complete 100% opposite. Um, I know it's okay. <laughs> I just went to take a sip of my drink and it is now sure. empty for the third time. <laughs> um, and he looked at me and he was like, babe, I train. That is a train. That's the text messages. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> my phone just went off. <laughs> um, it's anybody. Um, okay. So iPhone people know that there's like one sound, and it's like the sound every iPhone person right. has. Right. So I got annoyed with thinking his phone was my phone, and then sure. I got upset because nobody was ever texting me. It was never my phone. Right. Like I'm like Miss Unpopular while he's over here getting all of these text messages. <laughs> So I decided to change my alert noise to a train because he works for the railroad. Right. And I'm like, oh, man, this is going to drive him nuts. It's going to be so annoying to him. He sleeps, like, through the night. <laughs> he doesn't turn doesn't his head flinch. when the freaking yeah. noise goes off. Yeah. And now I'm the one that's like, dude, this fucking train needs to go away. <laughs> like, this is the most obnoxious noise I've ever heard in my life. That was a terrible idea. <laughs> so basically, it backfired directly in my face. But yeah, that That's was hilarious. my phone. Okay, so if you guys can hear it, just scroll. We totally just scrolled out on that. Squirrel. <laughs> That's fine. Fine. Um, so but yeah, yeah, he looked me dead in my face and was like, I need to go back to work. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> like, lame? All right, party pooper. Um, so he reached out to a company he used to work for years ago, and they were like, hell yeah, we'd love to have you back. Uh, sad part of the story is there's no jobs in Oregon right now, like no open positions. Like there's tons of like people who work for the company that work in Oregon. There's just nothing open. Um, so you have to pick between Salt Lake, Tulsa and Knoxville. Oh, I would have totally picked Knoxville. I would have too, except for shared custody, oldest son, delayed flights, weather, East coast connections. Hired hit man. Whatever. (laughs) So... That was that was not an option, um, and Tulsa absolutely one hundred percent was not an option. Um, no, no disrespect to anybody listening who lives in Tulsa. Um, I'm sure it's a lovely place. No, um, yeah, but not for me or, or my family or um, my life. So um, I was it's like, like middle of nowhere, Oklahoma. Right. Well, and it's like tornado alley. Yeah. And it's like hot ass summers and yeah, go coast to coast. Tulsa. It's also so I would, again, no disrespect. I'm sure it's lovely. Just not for me. Just not I'll for me. I'll look on Google Analytics. I'm sure I don't have sure. any listeners. Okay. All right. So anyways, it sounded <laughs> terrible. So I, <laughs> so I was like, okay, I guess we go to Crazy Salt Lake. And so we like headed back up to Oregon, packed up the last of our things, said our goodbyes, and headed to, to Salt Lake. And so Crazy. we ended up here. We got here in May. And it's been kind of a whirlwind we're still trying to get our bearings i got here in july you just we're all new yeah we're super new to utah yeah i lived in bryce but salt lake is a whole new world it's literally blowing my mind crazy crazy like not like wow this is amazing blowing my mind like, like this is the most weird place i've ever been blowing my mind twilight zone yeah, yeah. and we will definitely get into that in another podcast. Yeah. Just all of the things that make it weird. Yes. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. We have to. Yes. I think so. I think there's so many people who don't really, you know, because you can come and visit and you don't really get into like the, the underbelly. Huge uh, right? underbelly. Right? Like a pot belly and pig like underbelly. A, not like an ugly underbelly, but like a so pristine underbelly that it's really uncomfortable. It's a little ugly. Right. I will share all of my knowledge with you. I, I, I think I think that would be a, a fantastic podcast. Yes. Episode. It has to, to be it, next yes. because we're going to leave them on a cliffhanger. Yeah, I think and so. And my laptop battery is dying. Oh, God. So 
that is it for today, folks. Oh my gosh, this was so fun. Super fun, right? Oh my god, yes. Me and Ava had fun. Like, I love this. I could do this for hours. Do it. Let's do it. <laughs>